Hey everybody, this is Trenton Jones. So in this video, we'll be looking at how to retopologize a last using quad remesh and some guide curves. So what I have here is kind of a scan last that was already set up, but as you can see, there's some holes and the kind of construction plane is set up a little differently. So the first thing I kind of like to do is hover over and kind of go back to the default viewport. So obviously the quad view, and if I right click, this will change the construction plane back to this uh, regular setup. And what I want, um, since I'll be working Z up, I'm gonna make some rotations. Okay, cool. So once I've done that, I think that's about right. And one thing I also like to do, so I know that there's a couple of, uh, if I turn on my edge tools, analyze edge tools show edges i can see that there's a couple pieces that are not welded or just kind of floating in the scene so what i can do is say explode i'm going to hide this main one also ungroup and as you can see there's a lot of like fragmented pieces so i'm going to select all of those and get rid of them and show this main one back. And the next thing I want to do is focus on kind of this thimble uh, piece that's pretty common with last, but for quad remesh it's not so bad. It's not so good because it'll try to go inside. So what I like to do is call up the selection filter, activate the sub objects and just the faces, then run cell brush. I like the real-time selection. I don't want to select through it. I'm not a huge big fan of the polyline, but what I can do now is just kind of like paint uh, more commonly like you would see maybe in Moto or something else. But you can see obviously the holes, um, kind of my selection got a little bit away from me, so I can just hold control and kind of avoid those selections. So I think that's good because I'll just say, go ahead and select it. I'll delete these and I'll do the same operation of uh, exploding and, and removing. So uh, I'll say explode. And then I get two meshes. So one is this other one down here and I'll delete him. I can also remove some of these other pieces if I wanted to, but we'll be operating at a little bit lower topology. So I'm not too worried about this kind of indentation as well. Um, the next step would be to just fill the holes. So there's a great command, fill mesh holes. We'll just say fill mesh holes. Select the mesh and there we go. And that's really all I need to do uh, to get everything ready. So the next step, what I can do is I'll call up my layers or layer. And I can snap it to my corner. You can see I have a last in there. And then I'm going to make another layer called Guide Curves. Go back to that quad view. I'm going to be making some lines. So I'll make one line for this kind of cone, kind of top view. Get to make sure I'm on this layer. There we go. Perfect. And the next I'll make a line essentially for my kind of for the the a heel split and a toe split. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. So the first one, what I'll do is I'm going to turn the record history on. And the reason I want to do this is, is I can then make modifications to my curve. I'll also activate the gumball so that I can bring it up and down. So I'll call the project, select this curve. And then I'm going to keep the input so that I can move it around. And then there we go. So now I have this kind of really nice projected curve that's wrapping around that top cone. And if I wanted to, I can make it go lower um, and then kind of set it a little differently. But I don't need it, so I'll delete it. The next will be the kind of top line. And again, I'll hit record history. Go to project, select my mesh, 
and there we go. So this kind of gives me again. I'm gonna say I'm gonna use this as a heel seam and a toe seam, but yet mm, maybe it's not perfectly in the middle. Um, so then I can make some adjustments back to this original one. So as I move it, you could see it's coming along with me wherever I go. And then if I wanted to, since the last is a little bit more rotated, I'm going to rotate this top uh, line. So I'm going to turn points on, grab this one, and kind of pull it down just a little bit. Cool. And that's good. And we can delete this. And we get a warning saying that we're breaking the history, but that's okay. Cool. So the next step would be to get this kind of... Uh, this uh, kind of footbed edge um, and the best way that I found and you'll see in maybe some of the other videos is that the interpolate curve and then setting persistent on mesh and as you can see we get the option to select a polygonal mesh and there we go so most of my things will be restricted back to this mesh either I can do it in the shaded view but mainly I like to use the environment to kind of find this especially for this feather edge uh, where where that kind of where I need to kind of place my points. So I'll go around, be placing my points. And there we go. So then I'll come back and just type, hit close at the top and my curve is closed. So if I turn off my scan, you can see that we kind of have the, the curves, the outline curves of what we would need. And I'll select everything, type trim. I'm gonna trim up this top point and this bottom one as well. I wanna make sure I can kind of zoom in because it is based upon where you're kind of viewing. So you see that there's a little extra trim that select that one and see this one okay all good and again these are kind of guide curves so they don't have to be perfect but one thing I do want to change is the topol is the uh, point count so that if I click it and I show like points on I'll you can see it's has a pretty high density of points and I'm gonna kind of refine that with the rebuild so I'm gonna turn points off go to the rebuild command select the curve, and then it kind of gives me my point count of 300 points. I found that 75 is good. You can kind of go higher or lower, depending on what you need. But what's gonna happen now, if I turn the points on, it's a more even distribution of points. And I'm gonna repeat that for most of the curves. Okay, there we go. So the next one I'll do is I'm gonna make a layer called quad last. And this is where we get a little bit further. So I'm gonna turn back everything on, select this quad last layer, select the mesh of the scan, and then I'm gonna go into quad remesh, which I think was new with uh, seven. I'm gonna turn preview on. I'm gonna hide the input first. So you can see I haven't selected any guide curves and you can see how that it's trying to automatically retopologize this last. And this isn't perfect because I do wanna create some UV seams. So one thing I'll change, either I can use the, the regular count or I can use kind of more of an edge length. By default, it sets a one and we'll go something a little higher. So you can see that's a pretty dense mesh, so maybe three. Perfect. So the next thing I'll do is I wanna be able to kind of set these guide curves. I'm gonna select the guide curves, and since we already have it on a layer, I'm gonna select that layer, select objects, spacebar to select, and it'll re-execute that quad mesh. And you can see that it's trying to to be able to get there, but I would like to actually set a little bit more harder 
the definition of the curve influence. So I'm actually going to change this one to curve edge loop. So as you can see, it's made a really nice kind of seam in the back, a seam in the toe, uh, as well as a seam around the kind of edge. And I could have also make, make some changes with my edge curve and, and do some kind of uh, other, other geometric shapes. So once I've finished that, I'm going to say OK. I'm going to turn off both these other layers. Oops. Put that onto the quad last layer. And now I'm going to make some kind of unwelding. Because if I try to unwrap this right now, it won't work. I don't have any seams. It doesn't necessarily, it's kind of a solid. So what I'll do is I'll select this top one. And now that I've set that guide curve, I have a really nice edge loop. So I'm going to unweld this edge. And as you can see, it kind of selects this entirety, but that's not necessarily what I want. So I'll un unweld this guy. And then I'll hit explode. So now I have three meshes. One is the top, which we really don't need. The bottom is the footbed, and then the main last. So again, if I try to unwrap this, it won't necessarily unwrap as much as I need. So I actually need to cut another point. So I'll just cut in the, in the heel so that the toe will be the most kind of connected. And I'll say unweld edge. And then now we can use some Bacha commands. So what's really nice within Bacha, we have the unwrap and the UV editor. So I'm going to use those right now. First, I'll call up the UV editor. And as you can see, it says there's no texture coordinates, meaning that there's no UVs. And what I can do is either I can use this command and unwrap the current mesh selection that I do have, or with this one, I can unwrap with the left click. So there we go. It's already added to my UV space. Um, I can change the orientation and maybe the selection. I can also do some live unwrapping and pinning, but for the most part, we'll leave it here. So I've kind of rotated in that view and I'm going to go ahead and add it to my uh, document. Cool. I'm going to do one more thing. The, probably the most important thing is go ahead and save this file. Cool. And that's it. And I'll pretty much see you guys in the next video. All right. See y'all.